Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, today is Hugo Luton's birthday. Happy birthday, Hugo. God bless you, brother. Glad you're so glad you're part of our fellowship. Um, I, yeah, I, I've really grown to like you a lot over the last couple of years since you've been coming through three, four years, and uh, really enjoy seeing you in church and uh, seeing your smile. You're you're helpful and kind and uh, generous with your time and and your resources and. I just, I, I, yeah, I'm, you're a wonderful guy, and I'm grateful that you're part of our fellowship. May God bless you today. May you know the joy of God's uh, love for you and also the joy of the love of your church here your family today. Today also is election day, and uh, that means that I am uh, not in the office today, but I am working at the polls. Recording this yesterday on Monday, um, I have, uh, I, I work for the elections. I'm an election inspector for the Dutchess County Board of Elections. And um, so I'm working at one of the polling places. Actually, at the time I'm recording this, I don't remember which polling place I'm at. I'm either at the Town of Poughkeepsie Community Center at the Police Department or uh, at Poughkeepsie United Methodist Church. Those are the two places I normally work. So either way, I'm there. I'm helping to assist people to vote and uh, get the machines working and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's election day. Um, praise God, right? Um, on one hand, a lot of our election ads are going to stop. Um, you know, people are going to, we're not going to have, have our TV shows filled with election ads anymore uh, for a while. Um, I don't watch a lot of live TV, but even so, I was seeing a bunch of ads for different, um, different candidates. Um, so that'll be, be done. And, you know, who knows in the presidential election how long it'll take for all that to be counted and uh, put in place. I did want to just take a pause today and say, um, you know, I work as an elections inspector. Uh, I've been working in this election inspector as long as I've been in Poughkeepsie. And before that, I was working uh, out in Rochester uh, for, for many, many years. So I've been, I've been doing this for over 15 years, uh, more like 17, 18 years. And what I've found is that the people work in the polls and the people back in the Board of Elections are people who are really sincerely trying to have a fair election where everybody's vote gets counted. That's been my experience. Um, and there are mistakes that get made, there are all difficulties that happen, but um, we always try to resolve those in a way that allows the voter to vote, um, if they're eligible to vote, that allows them to vote and to uh, make sure that their vote gets counted as best as we possibly can. Um, when there are problems, the Board of Elections uh, steps in, and uh, they're, they're a great resource for helping resolve those problems, and they are really trying to make as free and fair an election as we can possibly have. Um, and so whatever the results are today, I want to urge you as Christians um, to breathe, <laughs> okay? If if the initial results look like your candidate is winning, breathe. Things can change as more ballots are counted. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's cheating that's going on. If your candidate looks like they're losing, breathe. Again, things can change. And if in the end your candidate wins or your candidate loses, keep breathing. <laughs> because God is in control. And um, we as Christians, especially, need to be witnesses to the fact that we belong to a kingdom that is greater than the kingdom of this world. And that we serve someone who is in charge no matter who wins the election. In fact, who's in charge over uh, the kingdoms of men. Here's an important, important passage, and it's not specifically about elections, but I think it's important for us uh, in the, the coming days. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm sad to say that I don't think right now in our country that reasonableness is the first word that comes to people's mind when they think about Christians in our relationship with politics. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. This is what Paul urges the Philippian Christians to pursue reasonable uh, reasonable lives. And what that means is, you know, they're not arguing everything with everybody. They're, they're not out there being cantankerous. They are trying to bring peace, trying to bring calm into every situation. Uh, let's do that. How about? Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. Jesus is nearby. <laughs> now, in this, what he means is that the Lord is coming back. The Lord is returning. But we also know that the Lord is near to everyone who calls on his name. So we don't have to be anxious about anything. And, you know, I've struggled in the past with uh, anxiety uh, disorder and with depression. I know how difficult it is when you're feeling anxious to hear a Christian brother or sister say to you, hey, the Bible says don't be anxious about anything. As if it's a command that we have to just sort of, oh, I was disobedient, now I'm going to obey. But I want to give you a different way of thinking about this. I think when, the, when Paul says, oh, wrong way. I think when Paul says, the Lord is at hand, do not be anxious about anything. He's giving you a reason for his advice. I'm not looking at this as a command, like you're obedient or disobedient. But he's saying, the Lord is at hand, do not be anxious about anything. You don't have to worry because you have a remedy. If you're worried, there's something you can do. In everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay? Oftentimes, especially with this election and things that feel like they're out of our control, we feel like there's nothing that we can do. And so our anxiety just builds and builds and builds. And we think that our primary thing we ought to do is jump on Facebook um, or Twitter or whatever social media platform we're on and cry long and loud about whatever thing we've heard from people on our side who are saying something bad about people on the other side. Oh, they cheated in this way. Oh, this election board did this thing, whatever. We don't have the resources to figure out if what we're being told is true. It comes from someone maybe that we think is trustworthy. Maybe we're hearing it from a variety of different sources, all of which are on our side. And so we feel like we have to amplify that by trumpeting that on our social media. Let me just say that you have another option, okay? You have another option. And that option is everything in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. If you have concerns, I want to encourage you to bring those concerns to God. Pray that the Lord would cause any wrongdoing to be exposed. And maybe don't go to social media about it, but go to Jesus. Social media is not going to result in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guarding your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer and supplication will. Okay. Uh, if you if you take to fa Facebook, take to the streets, whatever it is, with your objections, with things that you believe to be true but have not been able to independently verify for yourself, you weren't there, you didn't see the ballots be moved from here or there or whatever, you, you saw a video and it's kind of grainy and you're not really sure what happened, there's no sound to it or whatever, I'm, I'm just predicting what's going to happen in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, six, uh, three, four, five days. Um, you're going to see accusations, counter accusations thrown back and forth. You are not going to. I, you are not going to have the resources in order to determine what's right or wrong, what's true and what's not true. 
You may think you have the resources, but you don't, okay? To determine what's true, what's not true in these situations. You're gonna have an opinion that you feel you need to air. You're gonna, you're gonna have outrage that you're gonna feel you need to vent. What if instead you brought it to Jesus with prayer and thanksgiving? Okay? Prayer for the concern, thanksgiving for God's goodness, and leave it there. And let those who are responsible for figuring these things out do their work and wait until the verdict is in. Okay? I want for you to have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guarding your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I don't want your hair to be on fire. I don't want you to be uh, striving and struggling with anxious thoughts, feeling like, oh, the country is doomed because this happened, that happened, whatever. There's not going to be another election ever again because so-and-so won the election. I don't even know. I'm on recording this on Monday. I have no idea what the results are. But I'm predicting that whatever happens, somebody's going to raise a stink that's going to uh, that's going to imply that the entire nation is going down the tubes, and that there is no remedy for it other than taking to the streets with violence. Just resist, okay? Let's let our reasonableness be evident to all. Let's not be part of that. Let's not amplify that. Let's take it to Jesus and trust that he's going to do what's right. Okay? That's my urging to you. And please urge me to do the same. Okay? If you see me do an opposite, remind me that I said this. Because okay? it's going to be challenging. The next few days are going to be challenging, no matter who wins. All right? No matter who seems to win, no matter who seems to have cheated, no matter whatever, it's going to be challenging. Okay, let us, let's let our reasonableness be made known to all, evident to all, and let's let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. The only way that happens is if we take it to Jesus in prayer, not to social media in complaint. Okay, I love you. Let's hang together with this. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. This day, uh, when we have the freedom to go and vote, we have, as Americans, we have the, the freedom to go and vote. Our consciences, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do that, to, to take those steps, to vote, to advocate for our position, sure, but also to take our anxieties and our concerns and bring them to you because you're at hand, you're close by, you are not far away. So that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, may that be so. May nobody out there in the community say, oh, those people from New Beginnings, they freak out. <laughs> Rather, may they say, oh boy, what I see at those people in New Beginnings is peace in the middle of a chaotic situation. May it be so. I lift up Brother Hugo today. Please bless him and encourage him. Strengthen him on, on his wonderful birthday. May he know that he's loved by you and by your people. Lord, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.